Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and in this little tips and tricks tutorial, we're going to take a look at creating a custom brush in ZBrush. Uh, we'll go over some basic steps. I'll make it as quick and as simple as possible, because you can then turn around and take what I show you and make your own custom brushes and get fancier with it. And, and there are actually several different ways to do brushes. I'm just going to show you one way, makes it simple and easy, and anyone can do it. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go into our simple create tool and we're going to grab the plane 3D. Okay, I'm going to left click and drag in my viewport. It's a little wonky, that's fine. We're going to hit T to edit and I hold down my, chef, uh, my, my shift and my left mouse button and just snap it. And there it goes, it snaps to a nice 90 degree angle. It's all perfect. Let's go ahead and make this a poly mesh 3D. And go ahead and hit Control D to subdivide it. We're going to make sure we have enough polygons. I'm up to, uh, if you look up here, 1.5 million. All right. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the dots and go into freehand. I'm going to go to the stroke menu up here, turn the mouse average up to 15. You want it as smooth as possible. Okay. Now there's a couple different ways we could go about creating this. I mean, we could just go to our transform, activate symmetry, uh, turn on our radial symmetry and our Z, turn off X. And as you can see, right off the bat, you know, we can turn around and create a brush actually literally based on that. Um, but I'm going to actually show you, uh, let's just actually go into the parameters of an actual brush. We're going to duplicate it or clone it and work it from there. So we're, we're not going to use this one. We're going to hit Control Z, make sure it's blank. Let's go ahead and turn off our symmetry up here. We're in our standard brush right now. If we go up to our brush here, here's the little uh, palette. If I just click that little, little icon there, it'll move it over here, okay? So this is the standard brush. Let's go ahead and hit Clone. So now it's a standard underscore one brush, as you can see directly under this, it's standard one. All right, so these are some of the parameters for it. You can, uh, this this is how, uh, with the embed is how deep or how high it's going to go above the particular surface. We're not going to mess with that. We're not going to mess with gravity strength. We're just going to look, at least right now, we'll do something simple and just look at editing this curve. Now if I, let's go ahead and turn the uh, symmetry back on. If I left click and just drag, you can see this is the result of what this curve looks like. This is our base, this is the top. So there's an incline that goes up to the top and then back down in, all right? So we wanna go ahead and adjust this. So I'm going to, Clicking in here, I'm going to create another little uh, controller. I'm going to pull it over this way. I'm going to create another. I'm just going to left click. That creates another little uh, control. Left click. I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to left click. Imagine I'm actually working the shape of this. Imagine this is a side view of what ultimately this is going to look like from, from a half of it from the diameter. This is the center, it'll come out, it'll go down, it'll come up, it'll come around. In other words, if I grab it this way, you can see what it's doing. Now sometimes I, I'll put the, 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 symmetry, the symmetry on, the radial symmetry, because sometimes I find when you're creating just something in the center, uh, it can get a little, it's maybe not as clear but if I if I do a radial and, and and start to etch it in, everything I, I make can make sure every part of it actually works the way it needs to, and I really kind of like the way that's looking. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off transform uh, the activate symmetry under transform. I'm going to go do a control Z so that wipes this nice and clean. Let's go to a drag dot. Okay, I'm going to scale the brush up and then I'm just going to click. I left click and I'm holding. Okay, obviously I'm way too big. So let's scale this down a little bit. And I'll click. And I'm just, all I do is left click and as long as I haven't let go of it, I can do anything I want. I can 
move it all over but I can do something that so it just about centers okay so this is what this silhouette gets me if you imagine this is from the center you come down you get that point you come up this is the center it comes down up okay but that's kind of weak um, it's not really going to stand out if you move back it's you know it looks good but because it, it's not really standing up there's not a lot of Z intensity on it up here it's only at 25 uh, we're gonna go ahead and change that let's go ahead and set that up to say 40 50 about 50 let's try 50 okay ooh yeah that's good that's good Okay, let's take a quick gander. Yeah, that stands out stands out really nicely. Now again, I can we can do any number of different things to this. I can keep adding in points and keep changing the shape of this, but this actually has worked out really nicely. So let's go ahead and assume that we want this as uh, like a, a like a button that might be like a piece for a mech, like it's a rivet point. We could actually create a, a different rivet that would go into here in, in a different brush. Uh, but this is that imagine this is actually the rivet area you know when it when it's going to seal two pieces of metal so I like this I think this is looks pretty nice so I want to go ahead and look to keep something like this okay uh, again since we've cloned the brush we can now save the brush out and let's just call this rivet okay so I'm just gonna click it hit rivet and hit save now this is saved, this brush is now saved with the, the, the parameters of this shape being our curve with this intensity as the default with the drag uh, dot as the default stroke, okay? Which is good, that's just what I want. Now let's go ahead and test this out. We're going to go ahead and scroll, scroll down to our tool. Let's go ahead and get out of edit, hit T, hit N to clear it. Let's go ahead and get into our simple brush tool and grab a sphere 3D. So we're going to grab that, edit, and you can hit T to hit edit or just hit the button here. Let's go ahead and make sure we hit make this a polymesh 3D. We want to control D till it subdivides. I'm at 525,000. That's good. And let's go ahead and take a shot at this, see what it does. Oh, really nice. Really nice. And again, I'm left clicking and I'm just holding. You, you can actually spin all the way around as, as much as you want. Anyway, I'm I'm left clicking. I haven't I haven't put it down yet. You know, I haven't secured it as part of part of the actual sphere. But I'm going to kind of center it really nicely and then let go. So that actually looks really good. I actually like how that worked out. I'm going to now change the material to the default bump viewer material. Okay, and there's a reason for this. I'm, uh, this is the sphere, but I, I want to make sure we can't have our icon looking like the same thing as the uh, default standard brush because it's going to get confusing. So we're going to create our own uh, little icon. So let's just do, now we don't have to do it this way, I, but I'm going to do it as a BPR just to render it out. There we go. Now I'm going to go to render, render pass. And this this little icon right here, this is the actual render. Is I'm going to click it. I'm going to go ahead and save this as rivet. Okay, as a PSD. I'm going to open up Photoshop. Go to where that rivet is. There it is, rivet PSD. If you guys can see that. All right. If I if I leave this icon as it is, you can see it's longer than it is tall. So it's long horizontally. We want to make sure it would squish it. We want to make sure that this is a square. If 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 it's not 100% square, ZBrush will take that little icon and squish it, so you wouldn't end up with a circle. You end up with something like a uh, an oval or something. So we want to make sure it's easy on ourselves. I'm just going to hold down my Shift and I'm on my Crop tool, and I'm just going to click and drag. Okay, I'm just going to now using my arrow keys. I'm just going to arrow this over a little bit. So it's centered. I like that. Control S, Control W to close. Back in ZBrush. Okay. I'm going to go back up to our brush. And for this, uh, this little button is the select the icon. So I'm now going to click that. There it is, rivet, PSD. 
boom just change that icon out I'm gonna make sure I save it again save it as the art the rivet brush yes we want to go ahead and replace it and that was it so let's test it out we're gonna to go to preferences initialize ZBrush yep we're gonna clear everything out that's fine we can go ahead and close the brush palette let's get to our simple tool uh, we can go ahead and use a z-sphere 3d why not hit T into edit make a poly mesh control D control D control D it's 525,000 alright let's go ahead and load a brush what do you know there's our rivet let's just go ahead and grab it there you go you can grab it any which way I can scale it up got a big rivet <laughs> obviously too big I can scale it down this way I can do it over I can scale it way down there we go move it right in but there we go custom brush in ZBrush I hope you've had fun with this. This has been 3dmotive.com, and my name is Stephen G. Wells.